We're taking a look at the exotic side of the world of yarn with yarn expert Clara Parks. Hi, Clara. Hi, Uni. So there are some pretty beautiful yarns happening here from some pretty strange animals, or unusual animals. I would say unusual and unexpected. Mm -hmm. Unexpected beasts. <laughs> Uh, what we're looking at today comes from animals who spend their lives in pretty extreme conditions. Mm -hmm. And in order to stay alive when they're outdoors in the wintertime covered with snow, they grow a dual coat of fibers. They mm -hmm. grow these long, hard, rugged, kind of bristly outer coat fibers. Mm -hmm. And then when it turns to fall, they feel the cold weather coming, they start to grow this very, very fine, short, extremely insulating coat of under undercoat of fibers, or down type fibers. Mm -hmm. And then they survive all winter long, totally fine and happy. Spring comes, they shed those fibers. That's when we run in with our combs and our brushes and our bags and we collect those fibers and turn them into an assortment of beautiful yarns. So we have three different animals represented here. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, over here we've got fibers from the yak. Mm -hmm. And um, those, all of the, they all share the similar characteristics of being very short fibers. Mm -hmm. Now the shorter the fiber, the harder it is to twist to really hold it together. Mm -hmm. And that's why here what they've done, they've taken four strands of tightly twisted yak fiber and plied them together into a nice round and strong strand of yarn. With this type of yarn construction, you want to be careful about too much lace with lots of openings mm -hmm. because it's so round, it kind of nestles oh, in I see on what itself. You mean. Like the eyelets are sort of almost closed up. Yeah, they almost close in on themselves, but if you put them with enough stockinette around them, it becomes sort of a cozy kind of a nestling. And this is the difference between washed and unwashed. Yes, with all of these fibers, they're very, very light and fly away. Because mm -hmm. these are the downy undercoats. Exactly. Right. Okay. And so in order to control them while they're spinning them, they have to keep spraying um, oils onto them. Oh, I see. And then even after they've dyed them, sometimes they still have to spray oil. If they didn't spray oil on any of these fibers, they would generate enough static electricity to blow up the entire mill. <laughs> so it's not just, it's like a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. So when you're knitting with any of these yarns, if you feel it on the skein and it has that kind of feeling like uh, you forgot to wash the conditioner out of your mm -hmm. hair, have faith. That does not say anything about the fibers. It just means that they need to be washed. And once they're washed, you're going to start to see a cohesion in the fabric and kind of a bloom and a, a mm -hmm. puffing and a halo. So tell me about the animal that brings us this fiber because this is just divine. This is glorious. This would be the Arctic musk ox. Again, it's a totally similar surroundings. Mm -hmm. Very, very cold winter. The thing with musk ox, it's kiviet is the name of the fiber that the oh, Arctic okay. musk ox grows. The thing with this fiber on its own, it's so, so fine. And, and I say this, I don't want to insult dryer lint, but it has that similar, <laughs> it's like so fine and so short and so mm -hmm. crimpy that if you, if you knit it on its own, sometimes it's almost too ethereal. Mm -hmm. So what they've done here, they spun it in a beautiful lace friendly two ply, relaxed angle with 50% mm -hmm. silk. Oh, and I see. And it makes it one of the best yarns that you could possibly have because you have the shimmering fluidity of the silk mm -hmm. and then you have this gently rising mist of the kiviet, mm -hmm. which is going to keep you extremely warm but yet at a lace weight it's not going to be an overpowering fabric mm -hmm. and the other nice thing about this knitting it at lace weight is that this type of fiber because it's so rare it tends to be costly. Mm -hmm. So in a blend, you save a little bit of money. And then knitting it at lace, you get huge yardage in right. a little skein. You get a lot of knitting bang for your buck. That's right. Wow, well this is beautiful. And then finally here, it's a much more rustic kind of fiber. Maybe that's just the, the way that it's been treated. But. Yeah, well this is the American uh, bison. Mm -hmm. What we like to call the buffalo. Mm -hmm. But for labeling reasons, it's, it's technically it's the bison. Mm -hmm. And a bison fiber comes naturally off the animal in a uh, kind of a chocolatey brown. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bleach very well. Mm -hmm. It hardens the fiber, makes it really brittle and unfriendly. So most often you will find it in this type of um, incarnation where the under fibers can be left their own color. And then if you over dye the brown mm -hmm. in some different colors, it can be really, really beautiful. Just but sort it, of a heathery, yes. tweedy kind of effect. Yes, and then you've got the, the mist coming up off the pond, but the mist is one color and the pond is the other color. This is blended with a merino, blended with merino, to give kind of a base, a, a body, a foundation to the halo that comes up from the fibers. That makes sense. Well, three very beautiful fibers from three very 
unexpected animals. Yes. Well, fabulous. Thanks, Clara.